everyone. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining, thank you. If you are a previous subscriber or you're coming from a previous video on my channel, welcome back. So today's video is going to be following the previous one pretty quickly. Probably within um, a 24 hour period, I will have um, the, the last video and this one posted. And that is just so we can continue on so you can start your stitching and keep going. Um, it may be even posted within the same day. We'll see how that works. Um, I believe today is the part four, part four or part five. So in the last video, I talked about starting to stitch our hexagons together. If you have not seen the video previous to that, please refer to that video because I talk about laying out your hexagons to addition them into the design that you want if you're going to be creating your own design. But if you are using a pre-established pattern, um, you, can, you, you won't have to do that. Okay, so... I, in the previous video, I talked about starting to sew your, your hexagons together. Excuse me. So we have started our first two pieces, and we have accomplished that here. I have my thread still attached to my hexagons. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in, and we are going to talk about how to tie this piece off and to add your secondary or your, I'm sorry, your third hexagon. Okay, so let me go ahead and zoom you all in. And I'm going to try not to get too much out of frame this time. Okay, so I have stopped on this one on my last stitch. And what you want to do before you continue on to add your next hexagon you want to knot your corner like you did the first time when you first started sewing your piece together. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my corners. And I'm going to take that little, sorry I keep getting out of that. I'm going to take my glasses off. I can see just a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my corner pieces just the little stitches there. And sometimes the corners are a little tricky to get into, but we're going to pick up the, the little threads just like we did as we're doing our actual stitch. So you're going to put through, loop your thread over the needle, and go ahead and pull your thread through. And that is going to put a kind of like a knot into that corner. So when your piece is apart, it's not gonna pull your, your piece apart, okay? So now, to continue on to add your next hexagon, you are not gonna cut the thread, okay? So you're gonna grab your next hexagon, you're gonna open your piece up, and you can either, if you want, you can press your piece to lay it flat, whatever you prefer. But now you're going to place your, sh your next hexagon and you're gonna make sure, you're gonna find which part fits best. Remember I talked about easing your piece. You can see where this piece is just slightly bigger than this one. You may be able to, when you're joining your piece, okay, so let's find the one that's gonna, the side that's gonna fit best. And I don't like that hexagon. So we're gonna find a new one. And Okay, so I like the way this one fits. See how your corners are gonna match up well? And I'm not going to have to do too much easing, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and in the piece where we just knotted, 
I am going to take this one and I'm going to put right sides together. So let me make sure that that's the one that fit nicely. Which side fit the best? I think it was that one. No, that one. Well, darn it. Okay, so it was that. that. Sorry, I'm out of frame a little bit. So that one, I like the way that one matches up. So I'm going to take and put my right sides together. And flip to the back side. And I want to make sure, can you see how I'm putting my corners in the center? So I'm going to hold that and I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch and sometimes you'll have to kind of move this one just a little bit so you can get that piece in there. And Sorry, I'm getting out of frame again. You're going to take it and you're going to, can you see the tip of the needle? Okay. And then I'm going to knot it off again like I did to end the first two pieces. So I'm gonna pull it through, loop my thread over the needle so we're gonna have that kind of lock stitch and you can do it twice if you want. I find that once is enough because I don't want to create a lot of bulk in those little pieces because I will have more pieces joining. So, um, so when you open that up like so, you'll see you, you don't want to create a lot of bulk in your corner. So just make sure you, um, take your stitch that's going to work best for you in there. Um, I just do the one. You can do two if you choose. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and continue stitching. And again, I like going top to bottom. The first stitch I like doing a little closer so I don't have any gaps. And then just continue your whip stitching until you get that piece completed. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break and stitch this off camera and then I will come back and I will show you how to, how to add your fourth piece. I will be right back. Okay, so I have gotten to the end and I am going to take my final stitch and I am going to do my wrap around the needle so that locks my stitch and pull it tight. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and trim. And the reason why I want to trim is that when I open up, you'll see that I'm at the end, okay? What I want to do is I want to complete my circle first before I start adding any more around it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my thread and I'm going to leave about a half inch of a half inch of a tail. And that is enough. Okay. I did lock that stitch. Okay. So now I'm going to open up and I see these aren't connected. So what I want to do is when I have it opened up, you can press it open if you want or just go ahead and like finger press down, whatever you want to do. If you have one of those little roller things, you can roll it so your pieces lay flat or you just keep going, whatever you prefer. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to knot my thread again and I want to connect this piece to this piece. Excuse me. 
So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do my quilter's needle, my quilter's knot again, so I'm going to hold the end, wrap three, hold it, pull through. And I got my quilter's needle, or my quilter's knot. And now what I want to do is I'm going to combine, I'm going to sew this seam here. And you're going to say, well, isn't it going to mess with my... We have a little girl coming to say hello, checking out my, my, she loves the hexagons. She thinks they're her little toys. So that was Luna the Crafty Kitty. If you're not familiar with my channel, you'll see her in videos. Okay. Okay. So continue on. Um, you can go ahead and fold this piece. You don't have to worry. So I want, I'm going to sew here. So I'm going to just fold down. And you can see that this one might be a little awkward. Go ahead and fold it. It's not going to hurt nothing. So now what I want to do is I'm going to knot in that corner again. So we're going to, my thread's just a little tangled up, so I'm going to, okay. So I'm going to go up underneath the fabric and into that corner like I did when I created my first knot when I was combining the first two pieces together. I'm going to go up in that, up underneath the edge. So the knot is up underneath. Okay. And then I'm going to again do my lock stitch and loop over the needle. And pull tight. And that's going to knot that corner. And I have just a little loop in my thread right there. So I'm going to kind of separate, make sure it's pulled. Okay. So then I'm going to continue whip stitching until I get to the end again. So give me just a moment and I will be right back. Okay, so I just discovered a little tip that I thought I would share with you. I was talking about how I like to do my stitches from the bottom and go up. You may have to sometimes switch up your stitching because of the bulk of the additional hexagons. So you can easily, if you've started going up, you can start, you just kind of flip your needle around and go the other way. And that's going to prevent your thread tail from knotting up on your additional piece. So I'm going to just, instead of going from the bottom up, I'm just going to go from the top down now. And... So, and I'm going to take my glasses back off. Let's me see just a little bit closer. And you're just going to continue your stitching until you get to the end. And when I get back to that end piece, I will be right back. Okay, so I have gotten to the end of that stitching. I have went ahead and done my tie-off knot. I'm going to go ahead and open up. And you can kind of see that it doesn't lay quite well. Again, you can press it, and part of that will be from the papers inside of it. It may not lay flat until you get more pieces sewn. So now what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and add your fourth piece. So find your hexagon, what is going to match up well enough for you. And again, I did mention that you're able to ease those pieces together. Um, so that one looks where you can see that one may be a little just that eighth of an inch off. That's going to you're going to be able to work that later. That one looks really good. Let's see this one. 
Okay, I like that one. So now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to take where this third piece is. Um, find that corner again, which one I liked best. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my white piece together. And I can either sew my white piece to the white piece or at this point I can take and sew it to the center one. So whichever one you prefer to sew it to, it's up to you. Because if you get, you can see where my needle finished off is here, or my thread finished off, you're going to sew up this way, you're going to sew up this way, or you're going to sew up this way. So if I sew up this way, I'm going to be white sides facing. If I sew this way, it's going to be my white to my colored side facing. And then I would get to the end here. I could have my choice then of putting the next block. And if I do it that way, that is fine. You're just going to have to fold however works best for you to then do that seam to join this portion and then to join that portion. So that, my friends, is the basics of sewing your hexagons together. It's very, very simple. But if you remember from the first video where I was telling you a little bit about the history, where I mentioned that it is a labor-intensive hand sewing project where it's really soothing, um, this is kind of where your labor comes in. You're, you're hand piecing. You are having to sew one side, cut your thread. Um, that's where your labor's coming in. Um, and then um, basting your blocks. It's a very easy, relaxing project. Um, that is... I've, I've told you everything you need to get started. Um, I think our, let me f zoom you guys out a little. Okay, I think our next portion, let me see. I've showed you how to put your pieces together. Um, if you do have to remove any of your stitches, just use a seam ripper. Be really careful that you don't cut into your fabrics. Um, to stay organized, um, you can keep your patches in a little Ziploc bag. That's what I like doing because they're easy to see. If you are taking your project with you somewhere, um, to sew your hexagons together, you can have a nice little piece of lint there. You can have a nice little bag to take with you, something you can throw into your purse. It's really easy. Um, if your threads do get tangled as you're working, there is this type of product here. This is a thread conditioner, and I believe this one is... Um, I'm not sure if this is actual beeswax. Yes, these are actually beeswax. And let me show you how you will use these. You will just, you can see these little grooves. Can you see those little grooves in the plastic? All you're going to do is you're going to take your thread, kind of hold it on there and run it through it. And that's going to condition your thread and kind of keep it from separating too much. It's going to glide through your fabric easier. So um, there's that. Um, I think our... I told you about folding as you sew on there. You don't have to worry. Um, I think what's our next one? I told you about easing your seams. And there's a little tip about managing your work as it grows. And she talks about 
that it's quite easy to handle a small English, pa English paper piecing project such as coasters, pot holders, phone cases. But if you're making something larger like a pillow, tote bag, or quilt, and as your patchwork grows, the stiffness created by all those templates can create a bit of challenge. So trying to hold a large piece of English paper piecing and maneuver it around for sewing can be tiring for your hands. If you're using a, <coughs> excuse me, if you're going to be making a large project, um, she says try this approach. Construct your pieces in sections and you can see how she's done here. She does a first piece, then she builds on that piece and then she starts again, builds on this piece to this piece. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. I got a little itch in my throat and I just could not talk or quit coughing. Okay, so I was mentioning that if as your project grows, you'll start off small, build it into a piece, build a couple of those pieces, combining it into an art, a larger piece, and taking those larger pieces and combining it into an even larger piece. So, um, do what I, I keep saying do what works best for you you'll figure it out as you move along i have not gotten to that portion yet because the most pieces i have gotten together is maybe seven or eight and i that's when i learned that i wanted to um, learn more about english paper piecing and i stopped my project and um decided to go ahead and film videos for you guys um <clears throat> We are not to the point of finishing up an English paper piecing project. I will get to a video of that in the future as I'm building on it. Um, it'll tell you how to remove your paper pieces, things like that, how to create projects in, um, in small pro pieces that you've created. Um, I think my next video is going to be um, <clears throat> supp more additional supplies that you can purchase to make your projects easier. In the previous video, in the um, couple of videos back actually, I talked about just the basic um, supplies. So our next video I will be... Um, telling you additional supplies and that is basically right now I, I keep on saying basic too much sorry um, that is what you need to know to get started um, go ahead and go with it and you'll learn what works best for you over time as you're sewing your hexagons together I know what works for me kind of now and what doesn't. I like the double thread instead of single thread. Um, that's one thing you can play with. Um, I told you about laying out your blocks, taking a piece of taking a picture so you can refer back to it how your layout's going to be. Um, if you, I'm sorry, I'm, I got that cough and my nose started running a little too. <clears throat> okay, so if you have any questions, please comment down below. If you have any suggestions, also comment down below. If I, if you think that I maybe left something out, um, also comment. If you don't want to comment, you can always email me at jsnc18 at gmail.com. You can also <clears throat> check out my... Amazon wish list. If there's like something you guys might want to um, gift me, please don't feel free. Please don't feel like you need to gift me anything. Um, that's just going to be something that can help me progress in my channel further because supplies do get a little expensive sometimes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so in the next video, stay tuned and I will show you some more additional supplies that you can um, purchase over time to make your English paper piecing easier, even easier.
So we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.